My friends, welcome to this beautiful Crypt Church at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. We continue with our weekly Lenten reflection as together we go on pilgrimage through this holy season in preparation for the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord. He wants us to accompany him on this sacred pilgrimage, and he wants to accompany us. Since the beginning of Lent on Ash Wednesday, we have been and will continue throughout this Lenten season to hear a lot about conversion. Conversion is a word that we can take for granted at times, or that we can grow complacent about, or maybe even not take too seriously. Sometimes we will simply list those things in our spiritual lives, the, the sins in our lives which we know we have to work on. But conversion is much bigger than simply saying that we have to change our sinful ways. Of course, it includes that. That is the first step. But a real conversion also urges us to go even further and to embrace a new way of life, the way of life of the gospel, the way that our Lord wants us to live, which may at times not be so easy. It means that we are to go the extra mile, if you will, to live out the virtues like faith and, and hope and charity in our lives. The season of Lent is helping us to do just that and to persevere in the extras each day, to persevere in those grace-filled moments every day. We are encouraged in Lent to open our hearts and to allow God to work something new within us. The first step is this conversion that we take for our reflection during this second week in Lent. The way of the gospel is no easy road or way of life. Can't we feel at times lost in the spiritual life, especially when we think we are doing the right things, but we fall anyway? The new way we find in Jesus' message in the gospel has its difficult moments many times. But hopefully, the trials are not a discouragement when we understand that the struggle has long-term benefits for us, not only spiritually, but physically and, and mentally as well. The Lord gives us those moments, and sometimes they are small and, and sometimes big when we feel lost, but we come to know that we have been found, that we are on the right path. And when we experience them, we can know that he is renewing us in the spiritual life. And isn't that what the ultimate goal is? The gospel for this second Sunday of Lent is an example of that. The account of the transfiguration. The Lord takes Peter, James, and John up to the top of the mountain with him, and he is transfigured before their eyes. It was a life-changing moment for them. It was a glimpse into the promise that he makes to them and to us if we follow after him, if we persevere in the conversion of our lives. And what does he promise? Jesus promises eternal life. My friends, the transfiguration is a reminder and an encouragement for us, especially when we want to give up or when we want to find that simpler path or sometimes when we simply feel lost. It is an invitation to us to walk in the Lord's way and to accept the gift of unending life from God. That is the goal of Lent, and for that matter, the goal of the entire Christian life. During this second week in Lent, let us together recommit 
to open our hearts to the transforming power of God. And as we always do, let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us and to help us along the way. Amen.